Hi, my name is Michael Hankgartner and I'm a flight instructor. Today we're going to talk about inadvertent encounters with instrument meteorological conditions, or IMC. AOPA keeps flying safe, accessible, and fun by protecting your freedom to fly. We are the most trusted one-stop resource for all things related to general aviation. Become an AOPA pilot today. IMC is any time you're flying the airplane primarily by reference to the instruments, as opposed to visual flight rules or VFR, where you're flying primarily by looking outside the airplane at different visual references. There are a number of pitfalls that pilots can fall into that can result in an inadvertent encounter with IMC. Sometimes it's sudden, such as flying into a cloud at night. Many times, however, the process is much more insidious and the result of a chain of decisions that the pilot has made. For example, maybe a pilot has decided to press on in the face of a slowly descending ceiling or conversely, slowly rising terrain. Maybe a pilot's above the clouds and they see a hole that they think they can descend through only to discover that as they do, the hole is much smaller than they had anticipated. Maybe once they get beneath the cloud layer, they suddenly discover that they're at a lower altitude than they had anticipated and they don't have a lot of room to maneuver and maintain VFR. Now, any of these situations is dangerous and it's always important to have an escape plan. The problem is every situation is so unique that coming up with an all encompassing plan that you can use every time is gonna be difficult. A lot of times, any series of steps is going to be frustratingly vague that being said, there are some principles that if you adhere to, you're likely to have a safe encounter with instrument meteorological conditions. First, remember that the best way to survive in an inadvertent encounter with IMC is to not have it in the first place. When you're getting your weather briefing, make sure that you're using every available piece of information at your disposal to assemble a comprehensive weather picture. Also though, Remember that things are not necessarily going to turn out as they were forecast. Always be vigilant when you're flying and be on the lookout for unforecast weather conditions. Don't fall into traps and set limits for yourself. For example, come up with a certain altitude that you are not going to let yourself descend below. That way, if you do find yourself testing those limits during the flight, you'll know that you're ready to turn back and that you can do so while you can still see outside the aircraft. If you do have a moment where you realize that visibility has vanished, follow these steps. First, don't panic. The airplane flies the same way in the clouds as it does when it's in clear air. In fact, the most dangerous variable in an encounter with IMC is typically the pilot. Make sure that you remain in control of the airplane. Do whatever it takes to keep calm. Give yourself a little pep talk if you need to, but make sure that you know you're still the pilot in command. Assess the situation. There's no one right answer when the question is, what's the best way to exit IMC after entering? A lot of times we'll hear that the best course of action is to make a 180 degree turn and to exit the cloud the way we entered. A lot of times that might be the case, but not always. Every situation is different. Maybe once you've entered the cloud, you notice that things are slowly getting brighter. Well, if that's the case, the best course of action might just be straight and level flight and to try to exit the cloud on the other side. Maybe you were climbing when you began to brush up against the cloud. And if that's the case, then the best way to exit would just be to initiate a slow descent. Or conversely, maybe you entered the cloud as a result of unsuccessful scud running you were below it and the train began to rise and suddenly you're in IMC conditions. Well, if that's the case, the best course of action might be to continue to fly straight, but to initiate a climb. That way that you'll ensure that you're going to stay above any terrain that you might potentially fly into. And also you might be able to get above the cloud layer. Three, remember that it's always important to aviate and then to navigate. Maintain control of the aircraft. You can worry about where you are and where you're flying later. The easiest way to fly is typically straight and level flight. So do that first. Look at your attitude indicator and just remain in control of the airplane. If you do decide to initiate a 180 degree turn, make sure that you use a small bank angle, no more than 20 degrees. If it's your first time in IMC conditions, that is not the time to suddenly begin aggressive maneuvering you're only going to make things more difficult. Finally, 
don't be afraid to ask for help. One thing that I would emphasize is to only do this if you are in an area of what you believe is widespread IMC and if you already are firmly in control of the aircraft. Contacting ATC is going to increase your workload. Tuning and activating the frequency and making that radio call is going to increase the number of things that you're doing. And once you do establish communication, there are going to be a number of things that air traffic control is going to want to know. They'll want to know your position and the altitude you're flying at. They'll want to know the number of souls on board. All these are questions that are going to divide your attention. That being said, if you do need help, say for example, you're on top of a cloud layer and you need to get through, or you find yourself in what you believe is a widespread area of IMC, then don't hesitate to contact air traffic control and don't worry about getting in trouble for doing so. Just remember that the first rule is to always fly the airplane.